فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد وان سير اوف ذا بروفيت عليه الصلاه والسلام ان ويتش وي سبيكينج اباوت وي سبوك اباوت بريفيسلي ذا بروفيت عليه الصلاه والسلام دايد امين بنت وهب ام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ذا بروفيت ماذا شي باست اوي شي دايد When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's mother died, Amina bint Wahb, she came, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came back to Ummu Ayman. She was the one who the Prophet was under her care. And she brought him back to Mecca. She breastfed him, she looked after him, she cared for him. And she was under the kafala She was under the care as well of and she was being financially supported by Abdul Muttalib the prophet's granddad and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's grandfather Abdul Muttalib raqqa alayhi riqqatan lam yariqha ala ahad min auladihim the way that Abdul Muttalib was very compassionate and the way he felt towards Nabi Allah Muhammad he felt towards no other child abdul muttalib he really loved the prophet he had an eye for him he consistently used to look for him he would bring him close as much as he could he would ask the prophet to be brought next to him he would tell him to sit next to him if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam somewhere by himself abdul muttalib would sit with him if he slept abdul muttalib would not go to sleep until he saw the prophet Irhamuk Allah Abdul Muttalib he would not eat any food until he would say alayya bibni fayuta bihi ilayhi he would say I want my son mean refer to Nabi Allah Muhammad bring him to me and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be brought and when the prophet would be brought he would eat with the, with the he would eat with the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam as ibn sa'd mentions in his tabaqat There's this powerful story that took place that shows she uh, shiddatu mahabbat Abdul Muttalib lir Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam the excessive love that Abdul Muttalib had for the prophet there's this story that shows it and Imam Hakim he narrated in his mustadrak with an authentic chain of narration and Kindir ibn Sa'id an abihi he said hajjatu fil jahiliya in jahiliya i did hajj فإذا أنا برجل يطوف بالبيت كندير ابن سعيد he said my father said he said that he went to do hajj in the jahiliyas this is before islam فإذا أنا برجل يطوف بالبيت i was with a man who was doing a tawaf سعيد say i can see a man doing tawaf around the kaaba وهو يرتجز and this man is very nervous and he's very upset and saddened and he keeps saying oh allah bring me back my son bring me back my son so sa'id said the father sa'alt i asked man hadha who is this individual faqalu the people said to me this is abdul muttalib ibn hashim ba'atha bibni ibnihi he sent his grandson out muhammad في طلب ابن الله he told him to look for one of his camels for him ولم يبعثه في حاجة الا انجحا and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was never sent to do something except that he would come back and he would finish it and he would complete it and he would bring it back done وقد ابطا عليه but this time the prophet delayed he wasn't it wasn't on time he delayed and abdul muttalib was not used to the fact that the prophet would be absent for that long falam yalbath an jaa muhammad time didn't go on except nabi allah muhammad came 
والإبل the Prophet bought the camel. فاعتنقه عبد المطلب حق the Prophet. And he said to him, يا بني my son, لقد جزعت عليك جزع لم أجزعه على شيء قط. I became very shocked and scared and frightened in a way that I've never been before. والله by Allah لا أبعثك في حاجة أبدا. I will never send you to do a job for me anymore. I will never send you off to do any work for me. ولا تفارقني بعد هذا أبدا. And you will never depart from me from now onwards. I mean, you're going to have to be together. That's the love that Abdul Muttalib had for the Prophet ﷺ. He really loved him. Even the things that show the love that he had for the Prophet ﷺ is that Abdul Muttalib would be the only child who was allowed to sit on the firash, the mattress or the cloth of Abdul Muttalib. No other person could sit on it. Abdul Muttalib would not allow any of his children to sit on his Firash, his mattress or his cloth, except Nabi Muhammad. He would let him sit with him. Abdul Muttalib was the leader of Quraysh. He's the leader of Quraysh. And from the ayda of a leader is that he does not let anyone sit on his farash. That's the, that's the reality of a leader. So his own children, Abdul Muttalib's own children, they would sit around the mattress. They will not dare to get their legs or sit down on it. Except Nabi Lahi Muhammad. If he came and Abdul Muttalib saw him from far, he would request for him to come forward. And he would walk through his own uncles. He would walk through his uncles and he would sit on the mattress with his granddad. He would sit with his granddad. And he would say to all of them, move away from him. Move your necks from his own sons. He would say, move away. Well, for wallahi, by Allah, inna lahu sha'na, this boy has an affairs in him, something about him. Thumma yujlisu ma'ahu ala al-firash. And then he would sit him next to him on his firash. Wa yamsahu dhahrahu biyadi. And he would run his hand on the Prophet's chest. Wa yasudduhu ma yarahu yasna'u. And he would, it would please him the way that the Prophet would act and the way he would carry himself. Alayhi salatu wa salam. And you guys all know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Quraysh disbelieved in him and they chose not to take him, what did he say? He didn't say, I'm the son of Abdullah. What did he say? He said, I'm the son of Abdul Muttalib. I'm the son of Ibn Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet. I am not a liar. I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. <coughs> Abdul Muttalib died when the Prophet reached eight years of age. When the Prophet reached eight, Tawufiya Jaddu Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib died. Hafid ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he said, in his tafsir, he said, Thumma kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi kafalati jaddihi. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was under the care of his granddad, Abdul Muttalib. Ila an tawufiya wa lahu min al-umri thamani sinina. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was eight years of age when his granddad died. Ibn al-Qayyim said the same in his kitab, Zad al-Mi'ad, first volume, page 75. He said, وَكَفِيلَهُ جَدُّهُ عَبْدِ الْمُطَّلِبِ وَتُوُفِّيَ وَلِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ نَحْوُ ثَمَانِ سِنِينَ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was under the care of his granddad, Abdul Muttalib, and Abdul Muttalib died and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was eight years of age. When Abdul Muttalib died, he gave a wasiyah, a farewell, to his son, Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, to take care and to look after and cultivate and nurture the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, to protect him, to take care of him, and the reason why Abdul Muttalib specifically chose Abu Talib to look after the Prophet, it was because Abu Talib was akhawanili abin wa ummin. That Abdullah, who is the father of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Abu Talib, they were akhawani. They were two brothers, li abin wa ummin. They had the same mom and same dad. Abu Talib. 
and the Prophet alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's father and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, uh, uncle Abu Talib, they had the same mama, same dad. Ummuhuma, their father was, their mother is who? I mentioned it before. What's the name of the Prophet sallallahu grandmother from his mom's, the dad's side? Who is the mother of Abdullahi and the mother of Abu Talib? I mentioned this. Fatima binti. I mentioned it. Yeah? Who remembers it? It was Fatima binti Amr ibn Aidin. She was the mother of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mom, uh, da, uh, dad. She was the mother of the Prophet sallallahu dad. So Abu Talib and Abdullah, the Prophet's dad, they had the same mom. And of course they had the same dad. Abu Talib, he took on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and looking after him very well. Ala akmali wajhin, the best way that the Prophet can be taken care of. And he added him to his children. Rather, بَلْ أَعْظَمَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ قَدَّمَهُ عَلِيمٌ Rather, to be honest, the books of the seerah show that he gave more care to Abdullah, Abdullah his son, Nabi Allah Muhammad, over his own children. Abu Talib took more care, he took more care, Abu Talib, Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, than his own children. There's a Ibn Sa'ad, he narrates in his tabaqat, بِسَنَدٍ ضَعِيفٍ عَنِ بْنَ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُمَا A chain of narration which is weak. That, لَمَّا تُوفِيَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ لَمَّا تُوفِيَ عَبْدُ الْمُطَّلِبِ When Abd al-Muttalib died, قَابَضَ أَبُو طَالِبِ رَسُولُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ When Abd al-Muttalib died, Abu Talib, took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And the Prophet sallallahu would always be with Abu Talib. وَكَانَ أَبُو طَالِبٍ لَا مَالَ لَهُ Abu Talib had no wealth. Financially, he had no money. وَكَانَ يُحِبُّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He loved the Prophet. حُبًّا شَدِيدًا لَا يُحِبُّهُ وَلَدَهُ He loved the Prophet more than his own children. وَكَانَ لَا يَنَامُ إِلَّا إِلَى جَنْبِهِ And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would not sleep anywhere else except next to Abu Talib, his uncle. If Abu Talib went out, the Prophet would go out with him. He used to specify food for him. He used to say, this is his food. No one else. You guys eat together if you want. But Abu, this is Muhammad's food. food. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if If the children of Abu Talib, they all ate together, or they ate, or furada, or if they ate separately, lam yashba'u, they would never be full. The food would not fill them up. وَإِذَا أَكَلَ مَعَمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ But if the Prophet ate with them, shabi'u, they all became full. The food would make them fill. Uh, they would fill up from the food. فَكَانَ إِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يُغَذِّيَهُمْ قَالَ And if he wanted to, Abu Talib, to feed them, he would say to them, كَمَا أَنْتُمْ كَمَا أَنْتُمْ حَتَّى يَحْضُرْ إِبْنِي No one's going to eat until my son Muhammad comes. فَيَأْتِي رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَيَأْكُلَ مَعَهُمْ If the food came and he wanted to feed, he would say no one is allowed to eat unless Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes. And then when the Prophet comes, then everyone can eat. But this is a sanad which is da'if. The Prophet ﷺ, he traveled with his uncle Abu Talib to Sham. Tirmidhi narrated in his jami' an Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, kharaj Abu Talib, Abu Talib came out ila, ila al-Shami. Abu Talib went to Sham. Wa kharaj ma'ahu al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet came out with him. Fi ashyakhi min Quraysh. With him was a man from Quraysh. فَلَمَّا أَشْرَفُوا عَلَى الرَّاهِبِ The word فَلَمَّا أَشْرَفُوا The word شَارَفَ الشَّيْئَ It means دَنَا مِنْهُ وَقَارَبَ أَنْ يَضْفَرَ بِهِ When they came close to a monk, there was a monk, 
whose name was Bahira. Habatu, they went down. Fahallu rihalahum. They went down and they got uh, the stuff of the riding beast. Fakharaja ilayhimur rahibu. This monk, so they came into Sham. When they came down from their riding beasts, they took off their products and what was on it because they're now in the city. A monk saw them and they came close to him. He could see he was looking at them. When they, when, he, when they came close to him, he went to them. This monk before, they used to go by him and he never used to talk to them. He never used to talk to Abu Talib and his Quraysh, the men who were with him. But this time, he went to Abu Talib and he went to Quraysh, the people. And they used to come and they used to untie their riding beast. What he did was he started to walk through them, the monk, and he saw the Prophet and he grabbed him by the hand. And then he said to them, هذا سيد العالمين This is the master of the universe. هذا رسول رب العالمين This is a messenger sent from Allah. يبعثه الله Allah is going to send him رحمة للعالمين A mercy to all mankind. So the people, the men of Quraysh, they all looked at the monk. And they said to him, ما علمك? Where do you get this from? And this monk was a Christian monk. Who read? He was a Christian monk, as half of the Kathir mentions in the Kitab al Bidayah wa Nihayah, second volume, page 691. He said to them, Innakum hina ashraftum min al Aqaba. He said, When you guys came from the Aqaba, meaning al Tariq ila Jabal, the path to the mountain, when you guys came, Lam yabqa shajarun wa la hajarun illa khara sajidan. There was not a tree, there was not a rock. Except it fall in, fell into prostration. It was due to root. These trees and these rocks, they only prostrate to a prophet. And I know this boy. He has the seal of prophecy. As it behind his back. On his left side, we said that before, which is directly proportional to the Prophet's heart, on his back. That's where the seal of prophecy. And we mentioned it in our last lesson that it is a big, the seal of prophecy is as big as what? As a, the egg of a pigeon. Alayhi salatu wasalam. It is a slight meat that sticks out. Was it something that the Prophet was born with? We said no. It was something that took place after when? After his chest was opened, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is something that was in the previous scriptures. They knew this. So, he said, I know him because of this. Then the monk went and he made food for them. When he brought the food to them, and the Prophet ﷺ was in the camels, with the camels. He said to them, he made them food, and then he said to them, أَرْسِلُوا إِلَيْهِ فَأَقْبَلَ صلى الله عليه وعلى غمامة تضله. The Prophet ﷺ was in the ri'l of the ghanam, or the ibil, and the Prophet ﷺ, he said, send this to him, the food that he made. He didn't send it, the food that he made, he didn't make it for Quraysh. He made it specifically for Nabi Allah Muhammad. So he said, take this food to him. The food was then taken to the Prophet والسلام, when they came to him over the Prophet was a, a cloud that was shading him والسلام, when the people they got close to him they found that the tree and the cloud were both shading him والسلام, when the Prophet والسلام, sat down the trees, they diverted towards the Prophet ﷺ. Then the, the monk said to them, Unzuru, look, look at how the, the cloud is shading him and the trees. 
when he had said that to them, he said to the people, who is in charge of this young boy? Who's, who's got control over him? Who, or whose son is he? Who does he belong to? So they pointed towards Abu Talib. They said, it's Abu, Abu Talib. He said, this young boy, the Romans are going to come. And when they see him, they're going to physically harm him and they're going to cause him problems. Make sure that this child is protected. So Abu Talib, when he had found out regarding this issue, what did he do? He made sure that he did not let Nabi Muhammad out of his sight now. His worry and his concern, it multiplied Abu Talib. The ulama who authenticated the story is Al-Imam Tirmidhi. Tirmidhi authenticated the story. And also Al-Imam Hafid ibn Hajar in his kitab Al-Isabah fi Tamiz al-Sahaba. Hafid ibn Kathir also, he also authenticated it. Al-Hakim uh, in his Mustadrak, he authenticated it. He says, Sahih ala shart al-shaykhain wa lam yukharrijah. Sheikh Nasr rahimahullah ta'ala, Sheikh Al-Bani, he authenticated it in the Kitab Difa' al Hadith al-Nabawi wa Sirah. Sheikh Al-Bani authenticated it. But there's, there's one Imam who refused to authenticate it and graded this story to be munkar. And that is Imam al-Dhahabi. And Imam al-Dhahabi rahimahullah, he rejected this Hadith. And he said, وَهُوَ حَدِيثُ الْمُنْكَرُ جِدًّا This Hadith, he said, is excessively, excessively is munkar. It's a hadith that does, it's not right. And he said the reason why it's not right, he mentions them. And from the reasons is because at the ending of the story, it mentions that the monk he gave to Abu Talib as a gift. Abu Bakr and Bilal. And so the Habi says this is impossible. Abu Bakr is younger than the Prophet, two years and a half. Bilal is not even born. So this is the first Makara. He says also, if it's possible that Abu Talib was scared for the Prophet, then how did the Prophet go to then Sham again with Khadija? He said, this is another question. The second thing he says, in the narration it mentions that the cloud shaded him. And then the, the trees shaded him as well. He said, that doesn't also make sense. So he didn't accept it. But the ulama who are no, more in number authenticated, like Tirbidi, like Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, like uh, Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim, just the last part he, he rejected that. So inshallah ta'ala, for us, we'll take it, the authenticity of it, and that this happened, and that it took place. Even that the scholars they differ upon its authenticity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd, alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibn Sa'ad, he mentions in his tabaqat, he said, وَكَانَ أَبُوْ طَالِبْ لَا مَالَ لَهُ Abu Talib didn't have no wealth, and no money. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came from that journey, and he came back from Sham, he strove, Nabi Allah Muhammad, he strove to what? He strove to try to gain an income. Nabi Allah Muhammad. Abu Talib had nothing. And the Prophet he got busy with making sure that he looks after Ghanam. And he did it for a Ahl, a people who resided in Mecca. ولذلك Ahmad Shawqi, he says, كان رسول الله في شبابه لا يدع الرزق وطرق بابه أي رسول أو نبي قبله لم يطلب الرزق ويبغي سبله Musa al-Kalim istu'jira isti'jara wa kala Isa fi al-Siba najara That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was a, a person who was a shepherd and Imam al-Bukhari narrated in Sahih min hadith Abi Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said ma ba'at Allah al-Nabiyyan Allah never sent out a prophet illa ra'a al-ghalam except that he was a shepherd for sheep or goats or lambs. فَقَالَ أَصْحَابُهُ وَأَنْتَ The companions, they said, even you, O Messenger of Allah. He said, نَعَمْ كُنْتُ أَرْعَاهَا 
I was also, I was also, also a shepherd. Ala qararita li ahli Makkah. And I would do it for them. Ala qararita. Qararit is, as Hafiz ibn Hajar, is the word qirat. Ala qirat is juz'un min al-dinar wa dirham. From some, from some form of money that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do it for. Bukhari also narrated in his Kitab Adab al-Mufrad, and Tayalisi, in his Musnad, Bisanad al-Sahih, a chain of narration which is authentic. An Abdat ibn Haznin, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bu'itha Musa, Nabi Allah Musa was sent out, wa huwa ra'i ghanami. And he was what? Ra'i ghanam. He was a shepherd. Wa bu'itha Dawuda, wa huwa ra'i ghanami. And Nabi Allah Dawood was sent out and he was a shepherd. وَبُعِدْتُ أَلَا I was also sent out as a shepherd. وَأَلَا أَرَى غَنَمًا لِأَهْلِي I used to be a shepherd for a people in what? بأجياد. And Ajiyad was a mountain in Mecca. Right there I used to, I used to do, uh, I used to look after a herd of sheep or goats. What's the wisdom in prophets being ra'i al-ghanam? What was the hikmah in it? What's the wisdom? Number one, these are the wisdoms that the scholars mention that comes with a prophet being <coughs> ra'i al-ghanam. Number one is that the prophet will learn forbearance. And when they mix with the camp goats, the ghanam, and the hardship that comes with it, the Prophet is being trained to learn al-hilm wal mashaqqah. Because anyone who's from amongst you who's ever was told to look after herds of sheep will realize how they don't go together. They always go separate ways. So you would have to learn to bring them together to take them one direction. So you're going to have to go that side and bring them to the side. Go that side and bring them. And that's the reality of the people. They have different afkar, different ideologies, different methodologies, different ways of seeing things. So the Prophet's job is to take the people from the sides, come back, back, come to back to the Salat al-Mustaqeem, come back to the Salat al-Mustaqeem, sah? to direct them all towards one direction. Again, again, the shepherd, he's doing what? He's protecting it from any enemies to come and attack the sheep. And that's what the Prophet is doing. He's protecting the people from what? The Ummah from what? Any enemies coming and infiltrating them. That's why the Prophet said, I am a safeguardian of my Ummah. And if I go, it will come to my, my uh, companions that which has been promised. And we all know when the Prophet ﷺ died, what came? What befell? The great fitna happened, right? The great fitna happened. So, the person learns with the sheep, they learn that. And the person's nature gets strengthened. Very good. So, the person learns forbearance very well. They don't, people don't listen to them, they know how to convince and bring people together. Second is the reason why the ghanam specifically is mentioned is because the ghanam is very weak. It's a weak animal. Are you with me? It's a, it's a very what? Weak animal. And since it's a weak animal, the people who tend to have ghanam are not arrogant. Are we all together? The people who have ghanam are they middle class. People who've got cam, sorry, cam and uh, camels, they are what? They're arrogant. And also the camels, you don't really need to tell them and all them bring them together. You don't have to. Because the camel always tends to follow the first one. Or you can tie them together. You can tie them together. But you can't tie goats and sheep together. Has any one of you ever gone out and done the job? Yeah. Who's ever was told, go bad deer and run the show? Huh? Who's ever run, looked after our livestock? 
Huh? You did, mashallah. There's a lot of lessons in it. So there's hikmah in, in why that was chosen. Also the other reason, the wisdom, second, the third wisdom is, in it is what? Kasban madiyya min amaliyyad. This is actually a physical means of gaining. The person is actually learning to work for themselves, sweating. And the best form of income is what? Kasbuliyat. What you earn, what you sweat for. Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, Min hadith al Miqdad ibn Ma'di Karabin al Kindiyu, radiallahu ta'ala anu al Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akal. That the Prophet said, Ma akala ahadun ta'aman katun khayran min an yakula min amaliyadi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that no one eats food greater than something that he worked for. Min an yakula, for you to eat, min amaliyadihi, what you worked for. Wa inna nabi Allahi dawuda. For very Nabi Allah, Dawood alayhi salam, kana yakulu min amali yadihi. Dawood used to eat from his own. Dawood used to eat from his own, own efforts, his own hard work. Why did it specifically mention Nabi Allah, Dawood? Because all the prophets ate from their own amal yad. Right, Muhammad? Why specifically Dawood? Hmm? But well, why specifically him? All the prophets they ate from what they worked. All, why, why not mention Nuh then? Why not mention Musa then? Why don't mention Isa? Why specifically Dawood? Because Dawood didn't need to work. He was a, he was a king. Dawood was a king. He could have made money by just being a king. So he had everything, but he still had a job, and he still worked. That's why Dawood was mentioned. Allah gave Dawood what? Allah gave Dawood everything. And money and everything. Ma'adalika Dawood worked. So that shows the virtue of a man working. And that the Muslim should nurture himself upon what? Amal. Work. Islam is a religion that pushes people to work. Are we all together? They wrote books on this, the importance of income and making money and the efforts and stri striving and working and going out of your way to bring income to your house. There's nothing greater than bringing rizq to your own home and eating what you've worked for. Nabi Allah Dawood, alayhi salam, he used to eat from his own efforts. That hadith and Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih and he narrated in Kitab al-Buyu' Babu kasbi rajuli wa amalu yadihi He says, see, the chaptering he chaptered is that that the man working, a person going out and working and making money. The next benefit that it has is why the prophets were made ra'il ghanam, the hikmah is that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after knowing that he is the what? Akramul Khalqi ala Allahi, the most honorable creation of Allah. Kana min azimi tawadu'i li rabbi how humble he was to his Lord. And how he sallallahu wa sallam alayhi was what? One who remembered the favors of his Lord upon him. And the favors that Allah bestowed upon his what? His prophets. And all of the previous prophets. That they once were and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them out of it. That's why the hardship that you go through when you're young or something that you endure when you're young, if you look back at it as a blessing of Allah now that He's given you this, you would not have known what you're in right now if you didn't go through that, would you? You wouldn't know. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he participated in a harb called Harb al-Fijar. And inshaAllah ta'ala we will leave that for next uh, lesson inshaAllah ta'ala. Bi-idhnillahi kareem. Uh, anything which I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.